Hello, my friends. It's Ranger Russ at the Meg's Point Nature Center, getting ready for another one of my favorite animals. I want to tell everyone that Connecticut State Parks are open. And although today it looks like some thunderstorms this morning, you can still come out, visit the state parks. But you do have to maintain social distance. If you are not able to maintain that six feet of social distance, then you do need to wear a mask. Other than that, enjoy the parks. We also ask that you not use the picnic tables, although most of them are not accessible any longer. Um, we want to make sure that we can clean up after people leave, so that's why our picnic tables are stacked up right now. But you can bring a blanket, you can sit out on the grass or here on the beach. All right, so are you guys ready for today's favorite animal? This is a really, really special animal. It can do some things that most other animals can't do. And I'm gonna bring it right in here. So this is an American eel or a common eel. There are 800 species of eels in the world. So you can see eels all over the place. That's 800 species of marine eels, which means eels that go out into salt water. These eels only go into salt water when they're adults. So let's start their journey. They start out in freshwater. An adult eel up to five feet long begins its life by swimming down the river, down the freshwater, out into the ocean. It goes through Long Island Sound and out into the Atlantic Ocean. This eel will swim all the way to the Sargasso Sea, which is a giant bed of floating seaweed out in the middle of the Atlantic, the currents are swirling around it, and there's this massive amount of seaweed in the Atlantic Ocean. And the females, they, they go there, and the females will lay four million eggs, up to four million buoyant eggs. So there's a good vocabulary word for the day. Buoyant means floating. So four million of these eggs released into the environment those eggs will hatch out and they become larvae. As larvae, they are very, very small. They are perfectly clear. They actually start out kind of leaf shape and then they get into that eel shape. Uh, and they are called glass eels at that time. So those larvae will begin to grow and they will get larger and larger and they will become more of a yellow eel. It's actually called the yellow eel as they are swimming back to find fresh water. So then they're gonna go back up to where their parents came from, and they're gonna swim all the way back up the freshwater river, or whatever body of water they're swimming up, until they find a place where they wanna live. So large lakes, smaller ponds, they're gonna find a good place, or a large river, you can find them on the Connecticut River, they're going to go up there and they're going to grow. They're going to live about 20 years until they are adults. And now at that time, they look like this one. This is an adult eel. So they have this really brown on the back and the silver. Sometimes they're called silver eels because they're very silvery on the belly. And I'm going to maneuver him and try and get so that you can see what it really looks like on the underside. So they're living in the freshwater until they get to be adults, about, again, five feet long. Then they're going to swim back out to the Sargasso Sea, and the female's going to lay another four million eggs. All those eggs are not going to make it to adults. Like many of the animals that we talked about, especially animals that lay lots of eggs, only a small percentage will grow into adults. Okay, so let's see if I can maneuver this camera around, give you a better view of this eel. See, can you guys see that? Maybe it's better if I hold the camera like that. There we go. Okay, so we've got this eel. This one is not even two feet long, so it could get much larger than it is right now. I'm gonna, now, many of you know the electric eel. This is not an electric eel. It has no electrical charge. Eels do not have scales like many fish. They do have gills. They have a single gill right behind their pectoral, right back here. Okay. 
but they can also absorb oxygen through their skin. So they can breathe a little bit through their skin and through their single uh, gill. They do have teeth. Their teeth are small, kind of like sandpaper if it were to rub against you. I have been bitten by them. They will take your entire finger into their mouth um, if they get to the idea that you are food. They typically aren't going to bite out of aggression. It's going to be because they think they're getting some food. I hope that you're getting a look at that silvery belly there. So turn, go back the other way. It's just going right through. They're very, very slimy. They're really hard to hold on to. If I tried to grab it, it would be very difficult to hold on to it. There we go. There's the nice silvery. Okay. I don't know if you can see floating in the water is some of the slime has come off of the eel and it's now floating through the water. It's, it looks, I don't know, kind of like jello floating through the water. If you can imagine jello. They do have nice eyes right there. They like to live in uh, dark cavities, dark little uh, holes in a log or in the rocks. Um, they'll hang out there. Now, these are a delicacy in some parts of the world, uh, especially Asia, Japan. They like to eat them. They will eat the adults and the glass eel. When they're small, they're called elvers. And elvers are popular and uh, expensive. They're a, they're a delicacy. So I'm going to say, if anyone has any questions, you can put them up at any time. And also, if you want to put up where you're messaging from, we always like to see that. And I encourage you to follow us or like us on Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have additional videos over on YouTube. Or you can visit MegsPointNatureCenter.org, the virtual learning center, for a list of vocabulary words uh, that go along with the videos and some word searches, crossword puzzles, mazes, all sorts of fun activities that you can do at home. Do I see, I'm not seeing any questions yet. I think people are liking just watching the eel swim around because it is a fascinating little creature as it swims around in here. Again, they get to be five feet long, so when I say little, this looks like a pretty big eel. I know it looks you know, nice and thick, it's a healthy eel, um, but imagine it, this eel more than twice as long as, as this one is now. So let's take a look at the tail, since it's right there. Their tails are very flat, the whole back of their body is flat, and they have a fin. The dorsal fin starts right here and goes the length of the body, curls around as the tail, and then goes back under as a ventral fin on the bottom. Okay, because it's that whole length that uses its whole body to propel itself through the water. Now, most fish, they're, they're propelling themselves with just a little twitch of the tail. This eel is undulating. Its entire body is moving, and that's how it moves through the water. It is. So our eels that we have at the Nature Center, they will spend a month or more buried in the gravel, and we won't see them eating. And then all of a sudden, they'll come out, and they will eat a lot. So what do eels like to eat? The very, very small eels are omnivores. They're eating anything that they can get that's small enough. So basically, pr plankton, which we talked a lot about plankton. There are lots of things that like to eat plankton. The adult ears become more carnivores as they get bigger, and they will eat smaller fish, crustaceans, uh, there are lots of things that they will eat as long as it can fit in their mouths. So uh, an eel like this could eat a pretty good-sized fish. And we will notice that the fish will hang out in the tank for a long time, and then all of a sudden the fish will start disappearing. The eels will become more active. We have to add more and more fish, and they, they continue to eat them. And before long, they bury themselves back in, and we don't see them again for a while. So scientists don't actually know how long they live. They've been recorded up to 50 years in captivity, but they estimate it's about 20 years before they go and spawn, and they don't think that they return as adults after they spawn. They don't know for sure. 
and they've actually never caught the eels actually spawning. So it's really difficult to do research on these animals that swim so far out into the Sargasso Sea. Another really cool thing or something I find very interesting, the eels from Europe also swim out to the Sargasso Sea. So it's possible that the European eels and our eels are related. I think that's very fascinating. All right, we're going to move this up, give you a view here of its body. All right, let's do this. I'm going to set this down and angle it. So let's see if we have any questions. Southbury, hello, Southbury, Terryville, Middletown, cool. At a party, I was faced with smoked eel. <laughs> They do smoke, smoke deal, uh, apparently is very tasty. Do both the males and females go to the sea? So yes, they both go out to the sea. Uh, the, the female will lay the eggs and then the male fertilizes the eggs after she lays them. How fast do they swim? From Indianapolis. That's a good question, and I don't know how fast an eel swims. We're going to have to look up and see. So I always do a little bit of research before these programs to see if there's something new that I can learn. And there is not a lot of information out there about the American eel. People have been eating them for years. That was the main thing that I saw. There are lots of recipes for them, um, but not a lot of information. Eel was one of the Christmas Eve dinner. Oh, there you go. That's interesting. Are they endangered in Connecticut? This eel is not endangered. Um, there aren't a lot of them, though, and people harvest them illegally. They take the small ones, again, the, um, the elvers, and they sell them. They're really valuable. So that is a problem that we have here in Connecticut. And then someone's asking, do they bite? And yes, they definitely bite. I used to work at Rocky Neck State Park, and right on Bride's Brook, which you can see a whole program about Bride's Brook, the story of Bride's Brook, uh, in our virtual learning center. Um, but I used to go in there, and we would do a program where we would look for animals in Bride's Brook. And one day I was under the trestle, and I noticed the really nice dark hole in the wall, so I I was wiggling my finger in front just to see if I could lure something out. And an eel came out. It took my entire, took my middle finger all the way up. So its teeth were all the way up here. And it, it stopped when the side of its mouth reached the side of my hand here. And then it realized that I was not food and it couldn't go any further and it let go. But it scraped all the way down with its teeth. So I had a little U of scrape marks, and then all the way down the same thing on the underside. I had pulled my hand away as it was biting, and three feet of the eel came out of the hole. The tail was still in it, so the, this eel was over three feet long. And it was really surprising, made me jump back. And as I jumped back, I slammed my elbow into the bridge. Um, <laughs> so that was actually the worst injury. The eel bite didn't hurt that bad, and it was actually a little bit cool just to see how big and, and what it could do. But I really slammed my uh, elbow into a bridge, which didn't feel good. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions. I'm going to turn it. Okay, I want to do something else because let's flip the camera. I am going to show you. So this is the tank that the eel usually lives in. And right there is another one. So when I took this big one out of the tank to do the program, this smaller eel swam right into his hole. So this one was hanging out in that big cave. Now they do bury themselves in this gravel, and it's kind of hard sometimes to find them. We actually have three, and I, I did not find the third one today. Um, but they'll bury themselves, and you'll see parts of their body 
popping out in the gravel. But that's where this eel usually likes to live, is in that little cave right there. And the smaller eel hangs out in the gaps in these rocks right here. All right, let's flip this back around. I want to see if we can get a nice view of the eel. Hopefully you guys can see the eel. Now, if you can see, let's see if I can get a closer view here. Take a look. Its gills are, are going right in front of those pectoral fins there. You can see the, the head seems to be undulating. They have a nice wide, uh, the back of the jaw is nice and wide, and the head is narrow. They can extend their jaw and open their mouth bigger than you think that they, they should be able to. It's really cool. It's like they have an extendable mouth. All right. So I want to remind everyone, we do these programs every day at 11 and 2 o'clock. So this afternoon, the 2 o'clock program, I am going to be visiting Patchogue State Forest. It's a really great little, or I shouldn't say little, it's one of the state forests and it's a big one. So I think it's the second largest state forest in Connecticut. I'll have to let you know when, when I'm out there. Okay. Any other questions? Let's see. We've got some questions coming through here. Never, never wiggle my finger in front of a hole like that before a reason. Yep, probably a good idea not to do that. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions, so I'm going to wrap it up. I hope everyone's enjoying the programs. I will see you all this afternoon at uh, 2 o'clock from Patchogue State Forest. Hopefully we get good cell reception out there. I'm a little nervous about that part. Um, but we'll see when we're out there. And I will see you next week at 11 and 2. We'll be doing these programs. I think next week is going to be the last week of the format that we have now. Schools will be getting out and we'll be changing the format a little bit. But I'll let you know that as we get closer. I also want to let you know that there are lots of other resources out there from the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. It looks like it wants to jump out now. Um, so you can visit our virtual learning center and see what the other parts of the DEP are offering. So you can do the Great Backyard Pursuit. You can visit Dinosaur State Park, Kellogg Environmental Center, and the Goodwin Conservation Center. So continue to tune in, and I will see you this afternoon at 2 o'clock.